Hello everyone, this is Serious Trivia, and today we're starting a brand new Total War 3 Kingdom Let's Play on the channel featuring Li Jue, who is a mod on lock faction for the 194 A World Betrayed Start. Now Li Jue's forces alongside Guo Si retook Chang'an in this time period from Wang Yun, who had Lu Bu's help in assassinating Dong Zhuo. And for the purpose of the game, Li Jue picks up Dong Zhuo's faction mechanic, so he has intimidation, has all the Xilang unique units, as well as the building, and the raise mechanic, the execute mechanic, and the diplomatic intimidation. So we also start out with one noteworthy character and a full roster, which we'll take a look at once we do hop into game. In terms of Li Jue himself, he has a few uninteresting traits, at least for leadership purposes, but we do get some nice background bonus of post-battle loot, some reduced recruitment costs for Shock Cavalry, and some increased damage for Shock Cavalry as well. So we'll be using those. Uh, it's supposedly a very hard starting position, and the person that challenged me to this mod actually claimed that I can't last 15 turns, which will be quite interesting, because I don't think it's going to be that hard, even though supposedly there is this unscripted event that will pop up a couple turns into the game that makes this campaign almost impossible, which is why they say I won't last 15 turns. Uh, we're going to see how that plays. Now, the map that we start with, we have a lot of the gate passes, we have Luoyang, we have Chang'an, and I think a piece of the Western uh, Silk Trader because we are pursuing Ma Teng. Essentially, Ma Teng was working with a few members of the Imperial Court trying to gain our favor. Uh, it did not go well, and then he worked with those members to overthrow us, and it backfired and now we are chasing him down. He starts out very weak, and we can try to wipe him out, but obviously we have other problems. The coalition does not like us, and we have a lot of internal issues that we have to deal with. We do start with many vassals. Some of them are historical, some are not. We have control of the emperor at the start, which is why the Han Empire is under our control as a vassal. Uh, Zhang Ji is actually one of our vassals during this time, even though you could argue he is our equal. Uh, they were basically four generals from Dong Zhuo who kind of banded together to overthrow Lu Bu's forces. And Zhang Ji was one of them, Li Jue is another, Guo Si is a third, and the last one should be Fan Chou, who is not really featured in the game at all, which is really a shame. Instead, we have Yang Feng in the north, even though Yang Feng technically is our officer and should not be our vassal. Uh, he's put into Hedong because his ties to the former White Wave veterans, the White Wave Valley, is in this area. And somehow Zhang Yang is our vassal, even though he is closely aligned with Lu Bu and should not be in our sphere of influence. But the game does what it wants, so it's fine. Uh, we're going to play this as a pretty interesting historical what if as well, since we do get to start with the Emperor uh, if Li Jue did not lose him or you know, ran the court a bit better, maybe things would have been different. And we'll be playing this as always with our typical settings, legendary, legendary 40 minute battle timers. And let's get in there and China must be dominated. Alrighty, so there's no flyby since this is a mod unlock faction. There's no pre-made voice lines for anything and there shouldn't be any missions, but we do start out with some interesting uh, setup because of how people hate us. You'll see that our court everyone pretty much have low satisfaction. Our characters are actually leaving in the beginning, and these are family members. Uh, Li Xian is a nephew, and Li Li is also a nephew. Uh, both of these are historical characters. And then Fan Chou, the other warlord that I talked about, uh, the one that should be uh, equal to us, is also betraying us as a rebel faction, but he actually does not appear on the map, so I think this is just a different way of him leaving. Uh, this should be a story event, because historically, Guo Si and Li Jue and Fan Chou were the three parties that kind of divided power after chasing away Lu Bu. And eventually, three-way divide was just a bit too much, and Fan Chou was the more popular one amongst the people. So Li Jue and Guo Si had him killed, so they assassinated him and took over his troops. So he was killed early on, and once you see that your partners are able to are capable of killing each other, uh, Guo Si and Li Jue also had a deteriorating you know, relationship as each fear the other would kill uh, themselves, and then they eventually broke apart, uh, leading to a very 
messed up court uh, because no one side was dominating the court. And it did give the emperor some leeways. It wasn't as dominating as when Dong Zhuo was in power, since that's one strong man versus uh, two that's fighting each other. Uh, regardless, let's take a look at our starting setup and why this is supposedly very hard. So we have negative food. Uh, our court hates us, as we mentioned. Almost everyone has a red face. And we lost some of our family members. We are at war with Ma Teng who, as I mentioned, is very weak, but he will rebuild. We have a militia-heavy force. We are with Guo Si, who apparently still likes us, which is good, even though I think over here only 19 points. So that's still an issue. We thankfully have very, very high intimidation. We have 85 points out of 100. For those who are unfamiliar with Dong Zhuo's mechanic, which is what we have, Essentially, we have this resource that can be gained when we uh, fight any battles, we, we execute any character. Now, we're the only faction that can execute characters, aside from those related to Dong Zhuo, of course. And we can raise settlements. Those can all increase our intimidation. And it goes from 0 to 100. There are a couple threshold. I think the first one is going to be... 35 I believe and then the second one is 70 and then obviously the remaining 30 point here and the whole idea here is we get various amount of bonus at the second and third tier at the second tier we get a small two points of public order uh, there is a decay per turn we have to maintain this resource we get plus two points imperial favor we scare the emperor and we get 15 percent corruption reduction very nice bonus it goes up to 8 points of public order, 4 points of imperial favor. We get scare faction-wide for all our units. And minus 25% corruption reduction faction-wide. This is a very, very strong bonus just passively. And it can get even better because we can use this resource in diplomacy, which is something we'll do pretty quickly uh, to get our situation fixed. Because right now, there's a lot of issues with satisfaction. We don't want that. We're going to be also cleansing our court a little bit for various reasons. Even from a historical roleplay perspective, many characters on this court either shouldn't be with us or hate us. So getting rid of them really doesn't bother me at all. Essentially, we have a lot of the Imperial court characters who obviously align their interests with the Emperor, who is a kid here in our capital rather than with us. Like Yang Bell comes from the famed Yang clan, uh, becomes Grand Commandant, does not like us. Uh, Shi Sun Rei actually tries to assassinate Dong Zhuo early on with Wang Yun. Did not work out. Eventually got killed in the mess uh, where we chase Lu Bu out. No, actually he dies when he escort the Emperor back. So around 196. He's about to die anyways. We'll kick him out. Uh, Zhu Jun was one of the officers that fought against the old turbans. Han loyalists tried to march against Dong Zhuo early on. Also will die of old age very soon actually. Um, a lot of minor character. Uh, Dashu actually is the one to convince these four officers of Dong Zhuo to retake Chang'an. He is the visor uh, for everyone here. He actually become much closer aligned to the Emperor after they retake Chang'an. So he's not really favoring any of Li Jue or Guo Si. He took the side of the Emperor and became a member of the court. Um, advised the Emperor how to deal with us and so forth. Uh, Zhang Zi, who left in the game, he is placed in Shangyong, which is not historical either. He was stationed in Hongnong, which is the port here in Luoyang, uh, historically speaking. And he sort of mediated the peace between Li Jue and Guo Si. He wasn't killed because he wasn't in Chang'an. Fan Chou kind of stayed and got killed. Uh, Yang Feng was an officer under Li Jue. Eventually would betray him and join the emperor's side. He doesn't have any land, he's just a military uh, commander. Uh, Yang, Zhang Yang, not really related to us, closer aligned with Lu Bu, but somehow is our vassal. And that pretty much explains our situation here. Uh, Zhao Wen would be a Grand Excellency of the Works, I believe. Also did not like us. Uh, we had a lot of court debates. He uh, often criticized Li Jue, and Li Jue really wanted to kill him, but really couldn't do it because... Well, actually, he could do it, but he was persuaded not to do it. 
uh, essentially Li Ying, who is our heir and supposedly our brother, which is also not historical. He is our nephew as well. Uh, these two are nephews from our older brother, who's not here. And I think he is from a different older brother. Li Jue was the youngest in the family, I believe. Uh, Li Ying was a student of Zhao Wen, and he was there to kind of persuade us not to kill him. And uh, obviously, we had to listen. Uh, Li Jue had a huge family. He was married by this time. He had sons. I think he had daughters as well. Uh, his son's name, I believe, was Li Shu. And he didn't want to give his son away as sort of this hostage exchange. The way that he mediated peace with Guo Si was that each of them gave the other a kid as sort of this political hostage to have them believe that they won't kill each other because they have a son on each side. He didn't want to give him a son, so he ended up giving him a daughter because he uh, had a son, Li Shu, who his wife really, really treasured. And um, uh, Guo Si took that. It was fine. But the relationship wasn't great. So we're missing a lot of family here, and we end up with this strategist as our heir, who I don't want because he doesn't provide enough authority to balance out our satisfaction. We're going to be using diplomacy on turn one to kind of fix our satisfaction issue first and also fix our court. We wouldn't be missing him. He is just a nephew. And I think he's only recorded down in history because he was persuading us not to kill his teacher. So the first thing I'm going to do is fix our satisfaction. Actually, I can fix our food right away. We just have to tax really, really high. And we'll have enough food. And we can also assign someone to Grand Director, which will boost our food production as well. We do have a little bit of food production. I think there is a land development building here. We're probably going to get rid of that. We'll fix the buildings. I'll probably also get rid of this. Fix the buildings a little bit later. Uh, let's fix our court first. I'm a little worried about so many low satisfaction characters. We don't have enough money for a turncoat. Uh, if it's not a legendary character, we probably don't want to pay up at this point. Our economy is not so great. We did pick up some really good starting items. Fortmaster will help quite a bit. Also, for combat purposes, we do get some expertise and instinct. We don't start out with any good weapons. I think we can just actually go axe. And just try to do as much damage as we can. Like I said, our background bonus is actually pretty good, but there's also a minus 10 satisfaction for all characters. It's different from what's listed outside. Uh, I think that one has more to do with Dong Zhuo's faction. I think it's a copy-paste. Uh, actually, we have minus 10% retinue upkeep and plus 5% replenishment. Both of these are very nice. The minus 10 satisfaction are going to make things a little bit more difficult. And we're going to fix that. So we have access to pretty much all the map because we do have the High Empire, which gives us a lot of vision. Now, a lot of these factions hate us, but they are not at war with us yet. And we're going to come to Sun Se. He has two things that I want. First, he has the Imperial Seal, which will fix our satisfaction a little bit, counteract our sort of minus 10 situation with a plus 8. And we also get Prestige and Authority. So we want that. It's going to be very expensive. He also has a widowed mother. Sun Jian is dead. Lady Wu is single. Now, if you want to gamble that he does not marry away Lady Wu on this turn, and that he will equip the seal on Lady Wu, you can maybe wait till turn 2 to propose this marriage. And you will just have to pay up the marriage cost. And that would be a lot easier. But in this case, I'm fine with just paying this up straight up. And what we want, maybe, wait, let's see. They also like each other. 6.2 character worth diplomatic. Okay, that, that's fine. I'm trying to see if we can increase our value a little bit. Maybe if we assign administrators first, we might have more military strength. That could be something we want to try because we do have two administrator positions and we actually do want people administering uh, Chang'an as well as Luoyang just to build them up a little bit. 
Hmm, who do we want though? Is our... I guess we'll call him brother to keep things consistent. Okay, so he's not any good. We're probably going to put Jasu on the field. That leaves our two Sentinels. Plus three public water. We can take that. Okay, that one's kind of pointless, but I think we might just use our two Sentinels. Oh, Gwosli can also do it. Gwosli has... A decent faction white background to the point where I almost want to eventually make him our Prime Minister. But right now, to keep him happy, I think 5% income, 20% peasantry. We don't want to lose that much expertise. That's probably the best weapon for Administrator role. We can give him a bit more here. But the issue is also he won't be in the actual commandery. But it'll be an easy way to keep him happy. So let's do that. We'll put him in... Jing Zhao. And then one of the other, the one that actually provides a little bit of public order. We'll put in Luoyang. Not him, it's him. Perfect. And then the other character, I guess we can technically keep him and give him a assignment role, basically. Dash should come out and join the army. Alright, who else should stay? Family member, we could keep him and basically assign him a role. Well, we do have a farmer background. Is he... Yeah, he is a farmer background. So agriculture development is actually really good. Especially somewhere like this, where we can build a land development cheaper and quicker. Actually, not cheaper, but quicker. Minus two turns. So basically, a one turn type of deal, and you can get food from farming from him. All these 17s, once we fix our air and get our seal, we should be fine. Okay, so that's pretty much the assignment we want to set up. We are... Should we actually hold this back? I don't know if that actually changed anything here with the negotiations. It did go down a little bit. Uh, our administrator did help. I don't think the tax does anything. Just checking. Never thought about this having an impact, but we'll see. Yeah, that part did not matter. The administrator did help. Um, what else can we do? We want the seal. And what we're going to do is basically throw him some intimidation. It's going to cost us 30 points. And we get 18.1. And we're missing 1.2, which we can get from... An item. This is not bad, but it's also not great. I wonder how much would it be if we have to make payment to get to 1.1. 440? 444? Oh, it has to be higher than that. Maybe we'll just pay up for the difference rather than give away an item, especially a bronze one, and not get anything back for that. All right, that looks decent. 
现在必须谨慎，不能被冲昏头脑。And then we are going to move him. Now we don't want to lose him. I think we still have value having a family member around to marry away or something like that. So we're going to throw him into one of these positions.、Uh, we're not recruiting anything right away. Industry income might be the best thing here. We can't move him on turn one. Ooh, so he's probably going to be gone. If that is the case, All right? He cannot be shifted. So in that case, we're gonna just have to forcefully kick him out. We can also execute, but that would hurt our satisfaction, and we don't want that. So we're gonna just kindly ask him to leave and start our new family with our new wife. Who's going to be holding on to that imperial seal? We'll give her more authority. That's going to be six point satisfaction coming back. Chance of kids. She's thirty five. We might actually get a couple kids, and then some faction wide bonuses once we pick up some rank on her. And immediately we solve the satisfaction issue. We're at twenty nine with at least everyone. We did have to chase away all our nephews or and, and fake brother, and that's the first setup. Now we are still going to fire a lot of these people because we don't need them. Probably going to have her do assignment just to pick up more levels. To ask you, I want to come out. There is another way to gain food here. Who is young and actually kind of useful? Everyone's old. I mean, Shrisman Ray. We can forgive him for trying to kill us. Ten charge speed, ten percent evasion. He's not terrible. Roar of the Beast is not bad. We'll keep him. We'll fire the two other Vanguard. Goodbye. Goodbye. Now our champion. He's going to be doing the farmer. Assignments, plus four reserve, healthy, fraternal, stort, not terrible either. Another ten percent melee evasion. We can keep him as well. He's forty-four, decently young. I think Jolin can go. All right, so we. Chased away some of the members. We're at a healthy treasury level, and let's get one last assignment in.、Let's、see who do we want to use?、It's、gotta be between these two because I want Dashi to come out. So it's probably extra food. We're gonna do this fight. Pick up some intimidation back.、Uh, we did raise taxes, so that's gonna cause an issue with our public order. But every single gate pass can be just tax exempt. Doesn't really produce anything we need. Doesn't hurt them to be tax exempt, and they won't be causing us any issues. The two settlements that we have, plus the extra Hanzhong silk、uh, in Meixian, will be. Prone to having public order rebellions, but we'll farm those to pick up intimidation. Those are our friends. We actually do want rebellions from our settlements, and we're gonna do. Hmm. Do we want this? It's not a bad building for recruitment center purposes, but it's also quite pricey and also takes. A few red reforms, which I don't really want to pursue, so I think we'll bypass that. We will stick to a cheap building early on. It's probably going to be in state workshop land development tax for the early period. Over here, we're going to wait for these two assignments to. Get activated together before we build the land development and everything else would be faster that way. Unless there's something that's one turn build, which there isn't, that doesn't count. We're not going to build that right away, so we're going to leave that alone. That part's done. 
Before we fight and lose some military strength, what trade can we do? Total 5.9, Zhang Lu 1.6. Even though this is a terrible deal, I do want to get this to work because having Tao Tao as a friend is a lot better than having him as an enemy and trade deal is going to go a long way. Maybe we'll still have to give up this and that's okay. Because he actually comes with his own armor. I wonder how much we would have to pay to get this to work. It might be too much and we don't have enough. Deployment, not really what we need. Guess to force this to work, we'll have to kind of do this. All right, we don't have to give him everything. Thousand range, fifty range. Oh, come on. Yeah, every little bit matters at this point. All right, so we get this deal. We have two more that we can sign and try to sign. It's not spring, is it? It's not spring. So we don't have access to the faction council yet. But once we do get to that point, we might want to fill up these rosters so that we have access to those. Um, let's see what other trade we can get. We're going to have to go with the cheaper ones. Support him? Doesn't care about that. Yeah, no one likes us. That part is pretty much easy to understand. 1.6. Mm, we can. What can we offer him? I guess cash. Everything we have. And a little bit of per turn. We're stingy. Ah, Zhang Zi's our vassal. We can get some stuff from him. By offering him, guarantee that we're not going to annex him. And we're not. There's no, there's no one in Zhang Zi's faction that we would want. Underdog is very good for us. Does he have any items we can grab? We technically could get this back just as a cunning boost since we did give up one architect well that's not bad but that's a silver item that's going to be very pricey i don't think we can afford that could we just grab this okay we're taking money then he is poor we should start out with the 2000 by default. We can get a little bit of cash back just to tide us over. Any chance this can be 38? Nope. All right, we got our three trade deals. We have a couple other vassals that we can see if we can get some items from by telling them we'll never annex them. <sighs> Art of War is not, not actually that useful. It does not have anything great. We could take a trader item, trade influence, and then ask just for cash. Yeah, no one has a good economy. And then we also have... Where's Yang Feng? There he is. 
he does have Xu Huang as a general. So maybe if he doesn't have any good items, we just don't offer him this. And then we actually do annex him. We pick up a lot of land. And then if we see the opportunity to pick up Xu Huang, we could do it. Yelfo also has a good background bonus. We're going to leave him alone for now because I don't want to take these land in. We'll let him manage himself for a bit. And then we'll annex him a bit later. That should do it. High Empire, maybe? They're also our vassal. They did not get anything good. Money? One oh, probably one ten at most. Twenty eleven? No, one ten is the most. Can we get it more than a thousand? I I doubt it early on because they just don't have much cash saved. Later on, it would be a better deal. All right, this is fine. All right, we did it. I think we fixed most of the things that could go wrong. She can pick up the trader for five percent trade influence. And we can fight our first fight. Oh. Let's go faster. He'll drag out the garrison. Do I... Do I want to fight him or do I want to fight the garrison? Which map do I want to be on? I guess I don't want the towers. Yeah, this is the best we can have right now. We're probably going to disband most of these units after this turn. I believe he has another stack. I believe Ma Chua has a stack. So if we disband, we got to watch out that we don't lose so many units that we can't find Ma Chua later on. But those archer militias are trash and we don't eat those. Hmm. Reinforcement over here. They're probably going to wait. Oh, they do have a tower here. They would still have to charge at us even with the tower because it's an infinite time, it's a second chase. I think we just have to wait till they gather up the reinforcement, they'll pull themselves away from the tower distance, yet they will do that. Yeah, they're low health, they don't want to actually charge us. Why? How do they scatter their cavalry like this? That unit is like all over the place. They, they killed one? Oh, they didn't kill one of our guys. Okay. We have no active abilities. I'm going to be here providing some charge resistance. Not much I can do. We want them to come to us, and then we want to hit those. Actually, I know what I can do. I can go capture that tower so that our cavalry later on can flank the enemy range units without any issue.
They don't see us anymore. We're gonna let them come over here. Alright, drag them into the forest. back. Reform the line. Alright, I'm gonna capture that real quick. Pull them to the side. Stable, stable, stable. Getting charged, getting shot. Arch them out. They're putting their generals right there. Alright, see if we can kill that. Go, go, go. Alright, we just gotta win this side. Shoot here. Alright, we're good. Get the axe unit on them. Pick them off. What ability does he have? He has a roar. Well, that's not going to be too good. Flank back. Flank back. Stake on the general. Chase them away. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Yeah, they got the roar. We should still be okay. Alright, come back. Scatter real quick. Don't need to engage that. They're actually friends, so they will heal each other. Regrouped. Mm, shoot here. Chase that. He's probably going to bounce back. I'm going to send this one over here. There we go. Maybe we can wait for army loss on Matong, and we can just kill Pondua first. Chase them completely away. Engage, engage, engage. You guys shoot here. Come back, come back, angle that. No, 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 no. Kill the one who is... Not, he was unbreakable. Ignore the one who can just route away. Alright, chase that for kills. Go away. Turn them around. Alright, we got this. We probably want to kill anyone who's from the garrison. Which is kind of hard to identify, but I think that guy is definitely because he's captain. I believe the Saber Militia are also from the garrison. He's dismounted, isn't he? He fought spear units. Yep. I'm gonna chase a little bit just to make sure it's a little bit easier taking the settlement in the next fight. There are obvious casualties, but we're getting rid of the archers anyway, so that's fine. Dashi will be summoned. He'll be in charge of getting new archers. 
Can't see how many are left, but that's a good kill. Anyways, we'll just claim it. 129 left in the garrison. They're wiped. Ten point intimidation coming back to us. I think we'll take money. Alright, we could get a few different things. I think we want to get flexibility and reach first, so we're probably going to go down here and then eventually get flame. This will also give us the faction-wide redeployment cost discount. This will get us the faction-wide plus army. Probably the best route for us. We still have one more fight here. Yeah, should be a lot easier now. I might let Guosu do most of the fighting here. Since I could just get rid of all the retinues and let him heal up. Will they charge out? Oh, they will, actually. Then back up, then back up, back up. Then we got this. There's some trees and ledges here. We don't want to fight inside that range. Go scout for us. There we go, there we go. Oh, don't shoot our cavalry. All right, that was simple. They got one kill. I think one of the cavalry got shot. And our intimidation is back over 70. Uh, we don't need to raise it. We're going to keep this. It's a nice little silk trader for us. And we see that Macho has an army coming towards us. Uh, we have... The third tier again. Not sure we need the public order bonus. It helps, but I'd rather get the rebellions. We summon Jastry right now. Cost us 540. Any chance I can rank him up within the next few turns? Get that redeployment. If we show enough weakness, I think he will attack. And that might actually benefit us if he just fights us this turn. We're dealing with two cavalry. Two, th this is all trash. These two are the only two that we have to worry about. So maybe we do keep some D militia. We don't need Axe Band anymore. If we make ourselves look weak enough with barely anything here, he might just go for it. Should we go weaker? Because ultimately we're not keeping these either. If I get rid of these, I think we can still win. And this way we can encourage him to attack us right away and we can just solve this problem. Alright, so that's fine. Same thing here, we don't need to do anything there. Keeping the court clean. Let's see what reforms we started with. Nothing? Oh, okay, this is another disadvantage. Usually factions in the 194 start get four free reforms because it's been four years since the start of the game, 190. But in our case, we have nothing. We don't even have a free starting reform. Okay, this is gonna be a bit rough. We're very behind on reform. All right, now we'll deal with this once we get to spring as well. 
That's pretty much all we need to do. Our food situation will solve itself. Satisfaction's done. Public order is done. Everyone's on assignment. Four people keeping him for his melee evasion, basically. Charge speed, a little bit there. Okay, I think I think we're fine. Let's just uh, enter and see how things are. Can we boost? Yeah, the expertise a little bit for cheaper buildings next turn. Let's continue. He did not attack us. All right, we have the potential to hire some people. Ah, Chengyu. Chengyu, actually not Chengyu. That's not bad, that's really bad. That largely cancel each other out, so I don't think we're hiring anyone. We're going to summon him and build up our force. So we'll be fighting some low-level commanderies. We definitely don't need siege weapons at this point, even though it does make battles a little bit easier. We have 6k. I think it's better if we wait a turn. before we start recruiting. Then we have a bit more cash. Yeah, nothing, nothing can really be done in those regards, but we can definitely level up a few things. That's building. We have a lot of assignments in Loyang. Large town. It's very low level. We'll do a... Given that we have four food now, maybe no rush on land development. We'll just do a state workshop and then an inn. And then we'll pop the upgrade. We'll keep an eye out on this. Because we, we probably do want Xu Hua in the future. I think we're going to hold back on the upgrade for this soap. 2k each. Basically all our cash at this point. We can try to save up enough money to get this upgraded. If we really wanted to, maybe next spring might be a better turn. Because what we can do next spring is we can pick up the first red reform, which gives us another 8% recruitment cost discount. And then we can pick up a grand com a commandant for another 10% discount. And then we can build our army much cheaper. In the meantime, we just sit here for two turns. Not the worst setup. Also waiting for that event. There's supposedly an event that will happen that's going to make this much harder. So even though we solve a lot of problems right away, there's going to be more problems. Yeah, I think that's pretty much it. There's no one new. And no one tagging us. I actually kind of want them to attack us, but it's not happening. Yeah, well, Duel's going to get the Rebellion first, which is actually good. No thanks. We got an armor. Shizuri can wear that, I guess. It's a Vanguard armor, I think.
Not bad, but we don't really need another Vanguard here. It is spring, finally. Like I said, we're probably going to go down red. Get cheaper recruitment. We're going to assign Shrisman right here. Our other characters can be placed here as well. I'm not sure if the Faction Council is going to be worth it. Like, that's a terrible one. But maybe it's... Yeah, maybe we just do it. Jasmine needs a position anyways. We get income from industry. He might be better as his Grand Tutor, though. Just roleplay wise None of these salary increase is justified for what they can do for us. Um... I believe he's the one with the farmer trait. Yep, so having him in charge of Grand Director makes sense. Praying for something good. We can steal his heir and improve his relationship. It's just our, how is he? Wait, I just promoted him and he hates us? I guess the promotion doesn't add anything because he doesn't have enough rank. Lack of purpose is getting him. We can fix this easily with the item. Oh, we got ourselves a unique item. We definitely can't use this thing. You can pick this up. We can trade it. Give it to someone who we might want to mess with using spies. Can I take a look at his family tree before we steal his character? We're gonna grab his wife, who is a bandit charlatan. I, I don't want her. She might come with items, but that, that's about it. Pay 200 to get him happy? Sure. Pass. Just additional item, or a set item. We'll rather get the set item. In case it's gold set. And then we can speed up the production in Loyal. That's good. So I think that that's not bad. We paid up for more options and we got once we wanted. We also saved up a bunch of cash. Oh, we picked up more. So that's a set item we got. Plus four public order. She also ranked up. Starting rank increase for all units. We'll be recruiting this turn. I'm going to try to keep Luoyang happy and get rebellions here in Jingzhou because I can have kind of one group here taking care of two areas in terms of rebel groups. I'll explain what I mean by that later. So here we're going to try to, let's see, it's Tianfen. Get him this. And that eunuch is definitely an item we want to trade away. Not sure to who yet. Not gonna matter. Alright, so I think we have everyone in position. What we can do is also give Guosi a title. Uh, maybe not him, because he's an administrator, so eventually we want to swap him off. Actually, that might be a good reason to be him. We'll, we'll start with General of the Left. When we recruit, we actually want to maximize instinct as much as possible. Plus four. Yeah, actually we have all the proper items. Or maybe not this. Yeah, we'll go with instinct first. Because we do get a percentage discount, and then we're basically just going to have the cheapest army we can get. We save about 200 per cavalry unit. I'm not sure if we're going to get the full stack. Just going to see how much things cost us. He has no fire arrows, no flaming shot. But long term wise, we're probably still going to get tribuches. So it's going to be four crossbowmen, I guess, at this point. Because he's really, really far away from getting fire arrows. And then we're just going to get max spear guards. And then once that's done, which we can afford it, 
looks pretty decent. We flip this to General of the Right for a little bit of 5% upkeep discount coming back our way. All right, that army looks good. It's going to take a few turns to get the mustering going. But overall, not too bad. We have 4k left to build up. I think we get this upgraded first. These assignments, that has three turns. We can still squeeze in another building upgrade, which would be the small city upgrade to get the third building slot before that gets done. All right, so that looks good. We need more food sources. And honestly, that might be a little bit difficult. We might have to rely on this. Once Gwosa gets rank three, we get five food. He doesn't need this because he's in the same army as Li Jue. All right, looks like we're going to be fine. Oh, we get two builds, right? And they're cheaper this turn. Yeah, in that case, we do upgrade. Because we got the Faction Council event for them. Yeah, that's going to go pretty smoothly. Let's uh, continue. And see what event will hit us. Bibu gets wiped. He's going to re-emerge. And we get our choice with the Emperor. So I think we keep the Emperor. We get this nice prestige bonus. Everyone hates us, that's fine. Satisfaction, peasantry. Uh, we can also kill him, and then we don't have to deal with Imperial Favor anymore, but we're actually really well equipped to deal with Imperial Favor, given that we have Intimidation as our mechanic. So I don't think we need to do that. We'll continue as the Prime Minister. I mean, historically, Li Zhou was a terrible sort of court position. I mean, they were all general rank. No one was really taking the Prime Minister rank or position. Uh, Grand Master is really just a relic from Dong Zhuo, called himself that. We need 300, which is not too bad. It's basically the Duke rank requirement. Get the M building here. So far, so good. Nothing too dangerous or troubling for us. There's this rebellion that will form. We're going to summon some of our generals at that point. Administrator Trisman Ray, who's doing nothing. And then potentially one of them. Or hopefully we'll get a good recruit. So far, it's not looking like it. And we're not getting anyone decent here. As turncoats. Anyone like us a bit more? We do have a stronger army now. Nope. Not getting paid. We're also untrustworthy. We're usurper of the throne, so deals are harder. Might as well make it harder by getting the annex later. This is rank 5. It costs food. There's a little bit of food here. There's a little bit of food here. But it's also going to make us neighbors with Yuan Shao, which I don't really want. We'll take care of the Western issue first. Have to wait for this army to get ready. And hopefully he levels that up to level 3, maybe 4. I don't want to pay for the upgrade. It'd be better if the AI does it for us. Alright, where's... Oh, here comes the internal conflict event. So this did trigger. This is the one that makes things very hard. Uh, we get minus 25 satisfaction. We get minus 10 public order. You can take a look. Our court is in shambles. Anyone who's not... I mean, it doesn't even matter if they're in a high court position or not. The idea is we don't have enough points to counteract most of this. Because we've already given them sort of what we can in terms of position. So if they rank up, they're not going to get hit with additional you know, desire for higher office. But they're also not kind of favored in this situation. Hmm. I can actually... Sh what season is it? It's autumn. I can shift him over here. What can we do? Well, we can actually tolerate everyone staying at this level. We're risking turncoats. 
he ranked up. He's going to go down the bottom line here. He ranked up. I'm not worried about ranking up at this point. This is forever? This might be forever. I don't think he's going to come out on the field either. He's just a convenient character that we have. Maybe a future administrator. He's doing the farmer setup. He might be on the field. But maybe just the Simon character. They're in through. In my mind, I think title is the only thing that can kind of fix this. And it's just going to cost us money. That's about it. We we make him like a senior officer, chief of record, 25 points, just to keep him happy. Yeah. I mean, newly promoted is going to go away, right? So it's going to go down to 31. Your administrator, I have a position, a uh, title I can give you, actually. Commerce boost in Loyang with the trade port makes sense. Do we really want to keep you? That's always the question. It's just a random assignment character. It, the problem is if we don't fix this, we have the risk of spies. I do. I do want to keep him. I guess we'll give titles out. Senior officer for him. We can give cheap ones for now and just let that recently promoted kind of wear down. It's going to go 25 points, 15 points to 21. Give him an item later on. We'll do attendant for him. Technically fixed to have a decent economy. Not too worried about the minus 10 public order because we have gate passes and two areas. Yeah, this is totally fine. We're still waiting on this, though. We can't really move. Get this going. We're going to have to cancel this and refresh it. We need cash. Redeployment is so high. Yeah, also all the factions going to hate us a lot more now with the combination of those two negatives for being Prime Minister. Hmm, interesting. We'll see how we overcome this. We should be able to move next turn. We have to pay. Alright, this upgrade is nice. Um, we just want the redeployment eventually, so I think we have to go here. This level up is causing a desire for heart. We could give him a core position, but I'm not so keen on doing that. We'll give him this for now. He'll give us the food solution soon. Uh, we're not fully healed, but it's so close that it doesn't really matter. Let's take a peek. Full stack. Ambush. Rebellion next turn in Hanzhong. And Jing Zhao. Okay, perfect. So, time to recruit an army out in the field. It's going to be pricey. Uh, these four are the guys not doing anything. He actually has a good setup. We can do two generals. Shizun Rei and Changxia. 
I don't think we can save anywhere. Yeah, unfortunately, she's not going to hit another rank up anytime soon, so we're just going to have to pay it. We don't need this. We don't need this. He needs to have good weapons. Speaking of that, we want to flip that back. Right, if we actually put him out here, then he can't join the group to hunt down rebels. I actually think it'd be better for Lady Wu to pick up some experience that way. As on the field, rather than keep doing assignments. Keep driving this price up. Minus 14. Yeah, ouch. That's just going to stay, isn't it? I wonder what's our food situation. Okay, so this is not too bad. You can see Loyan's actually going to be positive if we don't super duper tax. Uh, we want a tax. We want, we want the rebellion to trigger next turn, so that, that's fine. 16, 14. Yeah, let's trigger both. Then we can moderate that back a little bit. We need to farm for Intimidation, which is another way we can moderate our public order issue. All right, so we'll get that fight going. They might come, seeing that the one's here. They might make a move for it. Okay, go ahead. We don't get to annex them. We're also at war with them. Yeah, everyone hates us, including our vassals. Right, Li Bu revives. Wait, Procher? Well, he's he's a bandit, but we can't hire him. Could very much be a spy. All right, as you can see, we have some rebels with items. Excellent. This would be our way of getting intimidation back. And maybe capture. I think I should put her first. She's rank three. Yeah, it's not like he has reach or anything like that. And we want to hit high intimidation so that we can use it for diplomacy purposes too. Yeah, we'll come back and hit them. Get rid of these. All right, let's see what they have. Decent garrison forces. A lot of cavalry. No surprise. Mantra has a silver spear. I believe he does have perception. Which would give him the higher capture chance, even we're one level lower. We're almost at patience as well, so he should lead. And then let's fight this out. Alright, our tribuches are not going to be very good against those cavalry units. Um, but we can use some of these terrain features to help us out. Actually, this might be a better, tighter setup for us. This can block one flank for us. We're going to need to cover the rear flank too. One unit is probably enough for that. Okay. 
We'll move them over at the start. He'll give charge resistance here. He's not very good at fighting. I do have Hidden Strike, which is not terrible, actually. We'll use that. I believe it also gives me stock. And then our cavalry can kind of just hover around in the beginning. We'll find some targets as the fight starts. We'll be lucky if we hit anything, but that's fine. We'll target maybe some infantry later. Oh, we killed a few. That's not terrible, actually. That's actually not bad. I was expecting much worse. But because of this, we can kind of hug our units here. Maybe angle a few here. Given that they can't walk through this, so they have to come from, like, there. And some of those cavalry units will no doubt take this big flank. I don't believe we can beat anyone. We both have very, very low evasion. Yeah, these offer pretty good spots for us to hit. I can go with them to kill that. Why are they not firing? Actually, no, you shoot that. Oh, we can't. Sh they're, they're just higher ground. We'll try to win with sheer numbers here. We should be good. He only has 3% evasion. I think we can take that fight. 
there is the family boost, but we might as well boost it early and boost it late. And we can also hope to army loss him. Alright, we're gonna swing these guys to all shoot this way. You two just move out of the way. Actually, shoot this guy. Shoot the town unit. Flank cross. Win here. Does he have a slam? No, he does not have a slam. The roar might still route us, but that's fine. We'll bounce back after that expires. We'll shoot the town unit. Keep flanking, keep flanking. Come kill him. Uh, ignore Machal, actually. I don't want to kill him and then boost him. That would be a bad setup for us. Alright, that routed. Crossbow route him. Chain route over here. Oh, no, no, no. Come, 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 come. Uh, let's see. We just need to sustain damage on the routing units so they don't bounce back. And then let our range units do that. Our spear units collapse on. He's dead. Never mind, we got this. Army loss kicks in. Wait for him to die. Leave him alone. Yeah, we're good. Army loss kicked in. Everyone chill. Watch your boss finish off the enemy. I think he has resiliency, right? He's gonna die. Masio is gonna be gone for good. Alright, very good. We're probably gonna turn down our tax rate a little bit. Until this wave of rebels are taken care of around Chang'an. We have enough intimidation now. Machal's captured. Wow. Um, We might actually release to get some fondness. There's a chance he could join us. We'll just occupy. It's a horse pasture. Sure, we do some of our upkeep. We can go for the last... Silk, we might want to swing down, we'll do first. Pick up the rest. Positive, positive. We'll do still negative. Yeah, I think this is good enough. Because of the plus eight, we have activate over here. If we want to use that for any sort of diplomacy, we can as well. But everyone pretty much hates us. Alright, I can't negotiate a peace deal with intimidation. I mean, he can come fight us, that's fine. We, we can try to get other deals. Alright, we don't have any family members. Could we...? We 
we can technically wait till next turn because that's when it overflows and then we can get some money from him as well. I don't want to get hit with schemes. That's pretty much why we want to butter up his hustle as much as possible. That'll be shifted next turn. Then we can get faction council. Yeah, all as well. We don't need to upgrade this real quick. He might come back and take this. This is a much difficult track. I think we do go down south here. Patience for better capture rate in the future. That's why we got Mach Hall here. We get redeployment discount. We get reach as well. And then he's going to go first for the reach bonus and the replenishment bonus. And then we'll switch every time there's a chance to capture. All right, that went really well. I think we'll keep the build focus on those two. And unfortunately, we just don't have good recruits. We didn't take a look at him. Yeah, we can't trust him either. We're going to leave these alone for now. We're way behind on reforms, which is going to be troublesome for us to pick up even building unlocks going in this to this campaign. So economy is going to be tough. He's going to attack Hulao Gate and maybe try to take Loy out. We do have a decent garrison there. I'm talking about Yang Feng with his stack. Right, we shift him over. New character to our court. That could be something we're interested in. So we pay 500 instead of 1,000. We definitely want that. We don't care about He Yi's territory. We can't mess with him. It's not going to hurt the AI as much as it can hurt us. Mustering's quicker, redeployment's cheaper. Tempted. Extra experience for our army, also tempted. I don't know if we're going to be getting anything out in the field. This might be better for us. All right, we'll pay for a character because we actually do need characters. Even though they will hate us the moment we get them, we probably have to give them a, a title. Yeah, I'm not sure. Like these three will clean up the rebels and then they'll move. They need to stay doing assignments and then they'll move to Loyal most likely. Yeah, I think I think that's pretty much what's gonna happen. We're still gonna get this. I might ignore this. Just doesn't hurt the AI as much as it should. Let me wait. Let me wait till end of turn. Maybe we'll get some new options that's gonna be better for us. Both of these take a long time. Let me see if he upgrades that, and we'll go north first. Alright, we'll let them heal. We could also squeeze in another trade. I think ultimately we still want to come over here. Public water increase, that also helps. But I don't think it helped as much as the extra trade deal. And maybe we can have a forced trade, because I, I don't think any faction likes us that we can negotiate this trade without paying up. All right, so we get this trade. Get the trade influence, extra commerce. We could devastate his settlement. Mm, then we have to fix it when we do take it. I'll pass on that. All right, this is better. He needs a title. Uh, something simple for now. It's difficult to expand our court because everyone needs titles, essentially. Anyways. Alright. And we got the law enforcer. 92. We're not going to overflow.
Yeah, we probably want to use this instead. We... Hmm... We can keep the tax level the way it is. The next rebellion is going to happen here. They can just get over there and take care of it. It'll be in three turns. They have plenty of time. I'm going to ignore the attack on the gate pass and potentially lose the gate pass. We have him here with the decent garrison, decent layout. I think we can defend here and it'll be okay. Don't want anyone. We want to butter up to Tall Tall here. That we do want. 9.6. It's not unreasonable to pick up that 9.6. So let's do this. We'll pay up. Maybe a temporary public order issue, but then we can solve it with rebellions. Cash? Most likely it's cash. I can also throw him a bone here, mess up his court, maybe jump in there and get some uh, character through spying. Right, have him supplement some of our economy for a bit. Have him actually like us. Yeah, we'll keep gaining these and keep using them. That's probably it. On turn 9. He will become our vassal, but we can't annex him. Ooh, vassal and then annex would be great. We'll just be untrustworthy the entire way. We pick him up, pick up Macho. And then they will all hate us because of the satisfaction issue. That's not really going to work out for us. Yeah, this does not benefit us one bit. We actually just reject this. We fight. I don't care about Matong. Matong can just join us even after we wipe them because we already probably got fondness stacked. All right, this is going to hold for longer than you can imagine. <laughs> we actually get a challenge against Yuan Shu. Keeper, we're, we're because we're the High Empire. The bonus is actually really good. We might actually think about it in the future. We got to clear out the West first. Once we do clear out the West, it might be something we consider. Uh, young strategists with decent background bonus, and oh, not background, but de decent trait. Not a spy. We definitely could consider him. We don't currently have a second strategist for a potential second army in the future, so that that is something we might consider. Right, got to cross the river the hard way. Rebellion next turn because we lowered our intimidation. They're on their way. We let them siege. Unless we magically can get the delegate, we don't, so let them siege. No worry. It's a hard fight for them, even if they do want to take it, we'll make sure they lose enough men. A lot of faction want to be our liege, no surprise. I think we need some food first. We don't have any characters. It's 
not a big increase. It's five turns. This is a better five turn increase. 100 increase versus like 50 plus 30. Now the problem is we're going to get a rebellion here as well next turn. And they're not anywhere near to take care of it. What if we scaled it back? They won't get it and we won't get it. Hmm. Bummer. That's not what we want, actually. We want sort of a timing difference. Okay, so we're just gonna we're gonna trigger it. We'll leave that rebel group there for a few turns. We'll resummon and then they'll defend. I mean, even if they attack, the garrison's strong enough to hold. Yeah. We'll be okay. It will be messy, but we should be okay. Ooh, why are they so far north? We're probably going to have to hit them and then recall. Liu Chong and Luo Jun, after getting wiped, is willing to join us. Alright, what a find. Um, it's going to be difficult to keep them happy. But we definitely want them. A burn officer, a guy with a bunch of items, and show of force eventually. 2k... Just gotta dish out the titles, I think. Um, yeah, let's just start with the recruitment. We know we want Neutron for sure. And then we'll grab Lojun as well. Yeah, absolutely pitiful points. Don't care much about most of these. We might steal a lot of his stuff. He did not pick up Show of Force. How could you do this? Wait, Tal Tal? Destroy them? Not the assassination event from... Okay, alright, poor guy. You will now be our Chancellor. Or Counselor. And immediately we're at 35 points. That's good enough. And for Luo Jun, he should be Administrator. Problem is, we don't have a slot for him. I can kick out my grand. I mean, he's he's doing the farmer stuff. I can kick him out. He's also farming. He's providing our four food. An additional food production. How much food are we getting here? It's net zero. So it'll be net four negative, I think. Mm, we might have a problem with food, but he can also become administrator immediately and solve our food problem. Does that mean we get rid of him? Oh, wait, wait, wait. This might be good because he comes with... Oh, he does not come with a good retinue. Because I was thinking his good retinue could help us defend Commander better. They both have recently hired, which is why it doesn't look so bad right now, but that recently hired will go away and we will have to give them titles. Uh, what do we do? What do we do? I don't have another position. I don't really want to fire anyone. I guess he would be the one I would be willing to fire. And he's no good. We'll fire him. What we will do is first use him and then fire him. He has no items. And then we're recalling both of them anyways to go back. Solve this problem. We could summon Liu Chong and defend it. Our 
We'll get rid of this. We'll keep his two units. It's going to be pricey, but we can't recruit them ever again, and we might as well use them. Uh, back here, we get this army started this turn. Uh, I'm not going to let him keep his gear, though. I think Guosi needs them more right now. My god, he's barely hanging on. Recently promoted is going to wear off. It's going to go down below the points. I don't have any good way of keeping him happy, actually. If I somehow make him our heir, or leader, <laughs> it's not going to happen. Prime Minister, Grand Master rank, we are pretty far away from that. Yeah, it's going to be difficult. I, I don't think we actually need to fight this. This does fix some of our public water issue. Oh, we're getting sieged, right? Doesn't matter if they're getting taxed or not. That solves our food. So now I can actually fire the guy who's doing the food stuff. If we want to. Might not be a bad move. We fire him. Save us some money. And we can maybe hire a strategist, because we actually do need a strategist now. Yeah, let's get rid of him. Take his item away first, um, instinct. I mean, everyone's pretty happy, but I guess we'll give it to him. And then we don't have to pay the attendant costs on him either. We still have food. That's the key. And then basically we, we just pay less salary, have a little bit more money to play around with. We'll summon the two, and then they'll be able to fight them. We'll steal this. It's more useful on him. There's a horse that is... going to be better on me. Because we get authority, actually. A hefty amount of authority. It's one point of satisfaction. Every little bit counts. He picked up a uh, black horse for ammo. That's actually okay. That should go to administrator. Uh, that's going to go to you. Or the cutting boost. He still gets a horse, just not as good. Yeah, we're going to strip the armor. Now Guosli can do a lot of the fighting for us. Actually, should he be doing the fighting or should I be doing the fighting? Hmm, questionable. Mm, 30 increase. This is probably first. Alright, pretty poor, but 
Things look okay now with the tax level that we're on. I don't care. Now, did we make it to turn 15 yet? Turn 12. Still a little bit off. I was challenged to make it to turn 15. I think we'll give it a shot. I don't think there's going to be that much fighting in these couple of turns. Oh, we have our first son. Li Gui. Building damage. Don't care. I, I imagine they could have a stack. But I don't think I'm worried. Actually, they don't have a stack. They have nothing there. They're probably rebuilding over here. I wish they leveled this up. We have vision. Nothing here either. Need to give these guys experience. Bojun looks terrible now, but that's fine. Alright, they're gonna be on the field, which means we can hit them one more time, unless we... Yeah, we want that. Unless we... Oh, actually, they still have enough men. Lucky one unit not getting routed. That's worth 10 points for us. Alright, we can call them back. And maybe consider summoning them elsewhere. Ah, he's losing his recently promoted one point at a time, so he'll dip below next turn. And then we'll have to figure something out. Incheng. We'll pick up this entire settlement. Alright, I feel like we can juice it up. Because the rebellions are still far away. We're, we'll try to save money elsewhere. We're not going to try to build any of these without getting the commandery, getting the potential administrator bonuses. So we're going to hold off on those and just focus on these two with the administrators. It's a decent item. All right, let's see diplomacy real quick. Yeah, I don't think we'll get anything there. This guy. I mean, is modest worthwhile? I think it is. I think we should recruit him. We don't have to give him anything in the beginning because recently hire will keep him happy for a little bit and then we will have to figure out how to keep him satisfied. In the meantime, I think we're going to put him on assignment uh, in Luoyang with all the commerce buildings. Even if he doesn't like it, it's fine. We do need to plan out a, a second strategist for a second army and Having him lacking like 50% less desire plus the 15% ready upkeep should help us. Oh, oh, Jinren. Uh, the bronze statues basically. They're made by the first emperor and essentially we need coin. This is a Dongzhuo event. We can get money. Oh, this is going to help us quite a bit. We actually end up paying 500 and build our own. Uh, Dongzhuo melted them down and made some really crappy coins that no one wants to take. Oh, we're able to reach, which is surprising. And we'll just take this. I don't think Matong has anything north of the Yellow River here. We overflowed. Should have used it. We overflow a little bit, I think. It's not a big deal. Alright, flaming shots. Perfect. Uh, 
Uh, probably we'll keep that, even though it's not really efficient right now. Actually, no, let's demolish it. There's more efficient things we can put there. I'm curious. He's not really a trysting away. But what we can do, I mean, we're losing the mustering, but I think that's fine. We move them here. And then... We don't win this, but they, they can't really fight this now. With this group helping them out. We should be okay. Are we going to get a rebellion anywhere else soon? Xinchong, yeah, that's going to spawn one. Then we should be able to take care of it on the way out, hopefully. That's two turns. I have one general who could come out and do something. Two, three turns. I figure we actually do go down here. I want to slow these down as we take care of the siege situation first. I don't have an administrator yet. We can get an administrator next turn. It's actually possible with reforms. So we'll wait on that. Uh, I don't think administrators are change costs for the swap. So we'll do the swap first. We'll pay that, you know, the same amount no matter what. Yeah, Han Sui has that. What we could do... Is maybe buy some land, actually. We can get some food. We need more cash, though. I'm not sure if we will try to conquer him. They're cutting off our trade. I feel like we throw him this again. Like we lowered our tax, so we, we can get away with this and keep befriending Tsao Tsao. He's going to buffer us with Zanba as well. And hopefully once the siege is lifted, we get the trade route back and everything will be good. That should do it. Nope. No free stuff. Like, if we get an administrator, we can put Luo Jun as the administrator of Jinchong. And then build it up. Emperor comes of age, which is actually good news for us if we can maintain high imperial intrigue. Um, because we'll get some satisfaction back this way. And we can boost it pretty naturally with this. We're going to grab... This one here for the administrator. Yeah, because we have a very weird rank up system, we actually don't get to use our prestige points early on. Still have no targets there. We're gonna have to shuffle the courts. Lord Jun comes here into Jincheng. So we can do Faction Council. High Empire heir. Who is their heir? It's his wife. But I'm curious, who is that wife? Wait, did I miss him? Wait, I don't see a family tree of the Han faction. 
Uh, he's our vassal. We should know him. Am I blind? I really don't see one. He's not here. Okay, so don't really know this option, but we get some items at least. This could also help. I guess I'll just go with that. Just more known. <laughs> help Zhang Lu because it's causing us public order issues. No thanks. We'll re-roll his... Oh, can we do... Instead of Lord Jun, can we get Liu Chong? Liu Chong, recommend yourself. Yes, perfect. We get show of force. And then it's kind of over. He's pretty much unbeatable at that point. Set item again. Um, This would help in that fight, but we have to pay for it. I don't think we need it. Alright, so that's all good. We're going to get show of force. Uh, make him unbreakable, show of force. And then... Improve his cavalry, improve his attack speed. Speaking of attack speed, we'll go with this. We get redeployment cost discounts. Gonna have to just go down the bottom here. This is turn 15? Next turn is turn 15, so we'll survive till turn 15, no problem. Alright, let's rebuild the stack here. Good to know. He did not level up the settlement, though. Because of the plus 10 that we picked up, it looks like we're not going to have any rebellions. Which gives us time to fix this situation. I, I think we... We can definitely fight this. But there's no rush, actually. One thing we have to be aware of, does he have... He does not have Night Battle. If he does, that would have been very bad for us. Yeah, let's give it one more turn. I'm going to shuffle him over here for the income bonus. We already did the Faction Council event. He's willing to pay 0.4. It's a little low. Yeah, this thing does not look like it's going away. And we're just going to have to figure things out. And now attacking Han factions also has a has an Imperial Intrigue price to it. But overall, I think we should be okay. Hmm. It's marching for Wudu. Uh, rather he pay for it? And we might want to go to war with him after we finish up with Maton, so we'll see. Yeah, sure. Are we fighting all the Naman factions? Keep going, keep going. Defending our vassals should get us at least some diplomatic brownie points. Yeah, trustworthy now. We're positive. That's... Alright, we made it to turn 15. It's a very long first episode, I know, but we were challenged to survive to turn 15. I would say we're surviving quite well. We're probably going to lose Wudu. We never build it up, so I don't think we're losing anything here. We're going to retake it, take all his land, wipe out Maton's faction. We did capture his son once. Uh, we'll try to capture him again to see if we can get fondness. He does. Oh, he doesn't have fondness for us. Hmm. So we have to try to capture him again to see if we can get him afterwards or maybe ask him for the employment early. We'll take care of the situation. With show of force now, it should be no problem clearing them out. And we'll do that. And then we'll go from there. Um, they're just trying to siege this entire thing out. It's ridiculous. But anyways... Looks pretty good, and from that point on, we're going to have to consider if we want to take on Zhang Lu or not. Uh, to pick up Han Zhong is probably necessary, but then he also has Ba Si, so it might be a short war and then maybe a peace out or something like that. And then we're going to return the force out east. We don't need to fight Cao Cao, we just have to have a second army to defend Hulao Gate, basically. 
We should have the money to do so, and then this main army can maybe betray Hansui at that point. Wipe out the north, invade Yangfeng, invade Zhang Yan, take the north, and then we'll go from there. Cao Cao will be our friend throughout the process, and it shouldn't be too bad. So that's kind of the goal. Hope you guys enjoyed this one, and see you all next time. Bye!